Hey y'all, welcome back. We're back in the garage for more fun activities. Uh, got to test drive the car yesterday, which you saw, and that was freaking awesome. So it's really cool to work on this thing on the ground. I'm like towering over it, and I'm super short, but um, obviously I'm going to have to put it back on jack stands again here in the near future. Definitely when we get to that rear subframe again. And I mean, there's a few other things, like I got some exhaust heat wrap. I'm going to try that out in a few sections, and if it works alright, I'll get more of it. But I um, definitely need to wrap where it goes under the gas tank, and a few other spots. We'll see how long that goes, and if it works out, I'll get some more. Another thing I did last night is when I was backing into the garage, like I went super slow and I kept looking at the oil pan and like it started to hit or like it stopped and then I slowly went forward. So I busted up all this concrete out front and I poured a little cement down. I'm going to get some more and put another layer on it, but I bust all that cement up as you can see over there. So hopefully no, uh, no broken oil pans because that would not be fun aside from how much another one would cost. But <laughs> you got to pull the whole motor out to change the oil pan. So that's not trying to do that anytime soon. I'm going to have to get another oil pan, a little pricier oil pan, just because that one hangs super low. Another reason we got to get it on jack stands, I have to make a skid plate like right now. <laughs> like it is way too low to the ground to be risking it. I mean, this pan was a pretty good deal. Uh, the main reason I got it is because it's quad trapdoor baffled. It has the oil filter in the normal location instead of running a remote oil filter. But it hangs a little low, as you can see. It was only 300 bucks for the whole kit, which it even came with an oil filter, and pan gasket, the dipstick, and all that, and the pickup tube, which was on back order for like four or five months, which I finally got right before I was going to fire the motor, which was cool. But we need a shallower pan. I think it's like Fly Me Out or V8 Roadsters Kit, one of the two. They're like $800 for the pan, and that's just ridiculous. So I'm looking into a, a couple other options. If I did have a shallower pan, then I would have had that just a little bit of clearance to close the hood without, you know, having to push down on it, which it's not that bad. But, you know, I'll probably leave it the way it is for now anyways because then I'm going to have to remake the whole front subframe. And, I mean, I'm not trying to do that unless I really have to. My main concern is just getting the oil pan level with the front front subframe so I'm not worried about spilling the oil all over the road and you know what comes with that territory but today we're diving deeper and uh, figuring out what's going on with the motor and why it's not running right it would be nice to do a compression test I mean I'm, I'm sure it has good compression because I just rebuilt it pretty sure I did it right seems like I did it right it felt like it had really good compression so I'm hoping that's probably not the issue but we're gonna do it anyways just to make sure now I'm gonna tackle uh, the fuel injectors because they were like really nasty when I got them. We're going to rig up a little fuel injector cleaner deal with this valve stem and some carburetor cleaner. I mean, I watched a guy on YouTube do it that said he watched another guy on YouTube do it. I'm sure he, I, I looked it up and it's like the second video that pops up. So if you want to figure out how he made it, you can just watch his video. But basically, I'm just going to hook the tube to this and stick the injector in it hook a 9-volt uh, battery to it and just ch -ch 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 while I'm squirting it. So that's what we're going to do today and then work from there and see how it goes. Well, my gut's kind of telling me I have a timing issue. I mean, because that's just kind of what it feels like, the way it's running. I guess this is normally the most accurate way to check, but since this is not an overhead cam motor and the spark plug hole kind of goes into the side, I mean, it's, you know, there's a little room for error, but for the most part, I, I spun it a few times back and forth at top dead center, and it seems like the both the valves are completely closed at top dead center, so... I would like to think that it's not a mechanical timing issue. I mean, it's it's not hard to time an LS motor. It's two dots. <laughs> so I wouldn't imagine that. I mean, I spun it over a few times when I put the, the cam gears on. I mean, it came back in time where it was supposed to be. So, I mean, it's just kind of hard to screw that up. You never know, though. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say it's out of the question. But, I mean, what I'm doing right now is definitely a lot easier than pulling all that and that and and then the old pan bolts and yeah so that's a, that's a whole that's a whole lot to go through to uh check the timing and then you know it's it's sealed up right now <laughs> if you ever done the uh, an old pan gasket or time and cover on these uh ls motors or anything or lts even the older chevys like they love to leak from the front so i got it sealed it's not leaking at all 
But on another note, we got us a good old high quality uh, Felpro gasket, brand new that you know it's been run for not very long and it already doesn't want to go back in. It wants to bubble up. So gotta love you some Felpro, right? Okay, well I definitely found a problem. Hopefully it's the problem. I would really like to imagine that it is. So like I said, these injectors were really dirty, rolling around in a box when I got them and no real known history of them but this one is like clogged it won't open and it came with like part of an injector harness they were cut out of a truck or whatever i've got this rigged up to a nine volt and you probably can't hear it but well you can't hear anything i'll pull another injector out and i'll record the next one you can hear a really faint click but it's not opening when you put it on there and you squirt it, the thing literally just pops right off. And I mean, it's a pretty tight fit on there. Like, it, it, it takes a lot to get that over that little hole right there. So, it's shot out twice on me. And there was, like, stuff coming out when I took them out. It was mainly on this. There's a bunch of extra dirt there. But a big chunk of something fell out, too. So, that's definitely a clogged injector. I don't think there's a way that I can get that unstuck because it sounds like the electron the solenoid in it is working or is trying to work but it's just stuck it won't move all the way hopefully that's the reason why this thing's misfiring it doesn't really make sense on why it's running so rich but that would make sense to why it would be breaking up I would believe yeah. let's see how the other injectors are okay so here's what I got rigged up this is a working injector which you can see And I'm not not sure if that's a great spray pattern, but this one won't spray anything at all, so that's definitely a problem. So for sure, I know I need at least one injector. Uh, I'm about to try the other ones and see how they do. Well, I guess so far I've only done a V6 swap Miata because I got two stuck injectors and the solenoids will not open on them. You can like hear a really, really faint click of them trying to open, but nothing, nothing will come out of them at all. And the rest of the other injectors are really dirty. I don't know if you can see that little speck right there. That's a big speck that came out. And there was, I mean, I kind of, uh, the other ones kind of, the rest of the stuff kind of blew off the paper towel. But there was all kinds of big black junk coming out. It kind of looked like carbon or something. I don't know what it was. But like I said, these things were rolling around in a dirty box when I got them. So... The thing was down on two cylinders and it still did a burnout <laughs> that's cool so hopefully a couple injectors will fix this we'll see how that goes okay now see this is what doesn't make sense to me though so this is one of the spark plugs on one of the cylinders where the injector was not working and I just wired wheeled all these spark plugs mind you and this one's a little black this is from the cylinder right next to it, which is way more charred and black. Of course, the camera's not going to focus on it. You're going to have to take my word for it. Obviously, that one is getting less fuel because we know that the injector is not working. But at the same time, maybe it's getting some fuel, but not a lot. You can kind of see the difference in the camera. It's really hard to tell. You can see it's hard to see in person, so it's really hard to see on camera. So maybe it's getting some fuel squirted out, but. I couldn't get any to squirt out on the, my little bench test deal here. I'm assuming maybe that it's going lean and because it's not getting fuel to two cylinders and then it's adding more fuel and that's why it's running so rich but then leaning out at the same time, I'm not too sure. That's the only thing that can kind of make sense to me right now but it's kind of hard to read these spark plugs are doing some weird stuff. So, And also I have Miata Khalifa in the garage to come meet her brother, I think, I guess. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I haven't revealed what the name for this car is yet, but it would make sense if uh, this one's a dude. They're saying hey to each other, and it's just really cool to just look at what a stock Miata looks like compared to this one. And I mean, honestly, I think that looks like it fits a whole lot better than the four cylinder does. Obviously I made it cleaner and I've taken a whole lot of stuff out of this. There was a good bit of stuff taken off when I got it. It didn't have uh, AC and it had a power steering pump that was just sitting there 
and I took that the rest of the way off. I took the condenser out. I took the EVAP charcoal canister stuff out and freed up some room in the engine bay. I mean, that's just really cool to look at them juxtaposed. It's really neat. And if you can't tell, I'm kind of going for the same theme on this one. I like black cars. It just is what it is. That's, I like what I like, so that's what I'm going with. And I'm going to put these rims on this car. Those are going to go back on that one for now until I get two more of these Koenig Rewinds. When I get two more, I'll put them on this car. But I want to put the 16s on there because I have 205s on here. And it fits a lot better. Brand new set of Achilles 205s, which should work out well on the V8 car. But that's just really cool seeing them next to each other. I'll probably take this little roll bar and put on there. For the time being, until I get a better one, I don't really like the single hoop. Uh, apparently, it's better than the mousetrap uh, style bar. It's supposedly a real roll bar. I've seen pictures online of it holding up on Flip Miatas, so is what it is it's better than nothing uh that was my main concern is is it better or worse than nothing apparently it is so look at them talking to each other they had a lot of fun hanging out together tonight this is the first time well this is the longest they've spent together they really haven't got to meet face to face they both look like they're happy a little drowsy but still happy it's a cool shot seeing both of these together. Regular Miata and V8 Miata. I think they like each other. <laughs> well, at least we found out a problem that should be the problem in theory. We definitely need two injectors. Pretty much need a whole set of injectors because there was all kinds of crap coming out of those other injectors. I, I don't know if it's not a flow test. I mean, I guess it's a flow test to see if it flows at all. So I don't really know what you want to call it. Flow cleaning test deal thing we rigged up. The other six injectors were flowing. I mean, honestly, don't know what the flow pattern or spray pattern is supposed to look like based off of what I had rigged up over there. I wanted to get a set of L59 injectors anyways, which is the flex fuel injectors in case I end up running E85. Probably going to have to go to LKQ and get them and they're going to charge me an arm and leg for them because LKQ sucks and they're extremely expensive. I think injectors are somewhere around 10 to $15 a piece. Who knows, it's definitely cheaper than buying brand new ones, but at the same time, LKQ could be a little bit cheaper, just saying. That's a good sign, I guess, and doesn't make a whole lot of sense to why it's running the way it is, or to why that spark plug is burnt at all, or charred at all, whatever you want to call it, it's sooty. That and the ones next to them are, have much, way more on it, so obviously those cylinders are not getting as much fuel, but when I tested it on the bench, it wasn't spraying anything at all out. So I don't know if it's just leaking some fuel in there or what. I find it hard to believe that it's the, these cylinders are pulling fuel from any other intake runner, seeing that they're opposed and the way they're set up, it would have to pull fuel from the other side of the engine over. So I really don't know how that's working out, but maybe that explains why it's running so rich. Maybe it's trying to dump fuel to compensate for, you know, I would say two dead cylinders, but my wide band is only connected to this bank off of this exhaust pipe. So it's not reading any exhaust gases coming from the other side, which, so there's a dead cylinder here and there's a, or a dead injector here and a dead injector there. But in theory, it's the computer's not even going to know about the dead cylinder on that side. I'm not a hundred percent sure how that works, but that only, only makes sense to me. If you only have one O2 sensor and it's on this bank, it's only going to read this bank. From my understanding maybe I'm wrong about that but that would that's what would make sense to me I don't see how it would read from that side when it doesn't even meet until way back there and none of that exhaust is, yeah, it's not possible so anyways at least we we found a few things out tonight so hopefully this will fix our problem all right well it's the next day just got back from the junkyard went and picked up a few injectors and apparently all truck injectors are just dirty AF so I mean I went to a few trucks and pulled a few off and they're just all really cruddy so I guess that's a normal thing but I took my little uh, mini DIY injector cleaner sprayer tester thing and just made sure that they sprayed I took a handful of them and tested them out and 
I grabbed three of them just in case. I was thinking about getting a whole set, but I mean, they're all really cruddy. So they, honestly, the ones I have right now, since I clean them, they look better than the ones that were there. And there were L59 injectors there, but I found out that those are EV6 style plugs. And I have a EV1 style Holly harness with Multec 2 adapters. I kind of wish I knew that to begin with because I was just got an EV6 harness, but it's all good. I can get those later and then get the adapters. Plus, these things were like $12 a piece. It was like 40 bucks for three injectors. And so now LKQ, on top of their extremely high prices, are tacking on a 90 day extended warranty without you asking. So you have to tell them that you don't want the warranty, and they just they just put it on there, and your bill goes way up, and they don't say anything about it. You have to like look at it and realize that it's on there, and, and they say, oh yeah, it just does it. You have to ask us to take it off. So dude, LKQ really sucks. I hate that they have the monopoly around here, and I wish they would go away, and somebody else would come in, you know, like one of those U pools or whatever they're called that you know I see out west or, or around. But anybody, I don't care, just somebody cheaper. But anyways, we're going to clean these out some more, do a little more spray testing, throw them in the car and see what happens. Alright, moment of truth. Let's see if this solved a problem. Sounds like a beast now. That's it, two injectors. Oh my goodness. It's alive! This thing's a monster! 
Well, here we are at the editing screen once again. I was so excited I forgot to record an outro, but man, this thing is a beast. I've never even seen a V8 Miata in person before I built this one. I kind of knew what I was anticipating, but it really had no idea. Like, this thing is scary. <laughs> and I can't imagine people doing Turbo LS builds. It's, it's nuts. But it, it works, man. It works. I'm so stoked that, I mean, it was something simple. And, I mean, finally, it, I, I feel like it, it's real now. Like, it runs right, and it... <laughs> the thing is freaking fast so like always if y'all made it this far in the video you're the real mvps and i appreciate y'all watching thank you to everyone that helped me out throughout this build and thanks for watching thanks for subscribing later y'all